Okay, Dr. Gooden here, and we are going to talk about vector composition. Previously, we talked about vector resolution, and this is going to be a short video about composition and how it applies to biomechanics. So the goal here is to create a single resultant vector through composition. And there's a couple of different ways to do vector composition. We can create a parallelogram, or we can create a chain, just like, just like we did for vector resolution. So I'll show you both methods. Now, here are the steps. We can arrange the tails of the, of the vectors, of two vectors, so that they are touching. And this is for the parallelogram method. Then we can draw a parallelogram, then trace the diagonal, and then repeat that process. Okay? And I didn't write out the steps for the chain method, but I'll show them to you. It's, it's pretty easy. So first, the parallelogram method. What I will do is trace two of the vectors whose tails are already touching, and use those new lengths to create a parallelogram, and then trace the diagonal. Okay, so I have two sides of the parallelogram. I'm going to duplicate those. All right, now I have my new parallelogram, and I need to draw the resultant vector. And so we just go diagonal to diagonal, and let's get rid of those guidelines. And there we have our resultant. Okay, that's the resultant vector. And so we've done the first step now of composing all of these vectors. We've, we've done two of them. And what we could do is go through and continue to create new parallelograms and keep repeating these steps. Okay, so we arranged them so that the tails were touching. We drew the parallelogram. We traced the diagonal. And we could repeat it, but what I'm going to do instead is actually arrange these, um, these vectors so that they are in a chain, a vector chain, from tail to tip, or, or tip to tail, and once I create a chain out of all of them, then I'm just going to draw one big resultant, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I might actually run out of space here, so um, I'll probably have to reorganize this a little bit. These first two, um, this little guy right here, and the one that we just drew, the resultant over here, they are already tip to tail, so I will use those as a starting point and then just move the other vectors so that they are also lined up. Okay, so now I have them all arranged, tip to tail, tip to tail, tip to tail. Remember that these two vectors right here, we already um, composed into the red resultant vector, so I, I didn't arrange those because we've already done those. And now all I have to do is draw one big resultant. Okay, and I'll erase the guidelines. And here is our new resultant. Okay. And in order to get the magnitude of this resultant vector, all we need to do is measure it. I'm not going to measure it here because I don't have a ruler. Um, but that's how you do vector composition. Now, if we want to apply that to biomechanics, let's answer this question use vector composition to determine the line of pull of the quadriceps. So we know that the quadriceps have varying lines of pull that all meet up at the patellar tendon and result in a single resultant vector that then extends the, extends the knee. But how do we know if that line of, uh, how do we know the angle of that line of pull and the magnitude of it? Well, we can use vector composition to find out. So if we have rectus femoris and vastus medialis, and vastus lateralis. It's a very jacked and juicy looking quad right there. Then we can go ahead and draw there what we, what we would surmise that their component vectors are. There's one, and I'm going to draw them all, all of them already um, tail to tail so that it makes our analysis easier. Okay, so there are the three vectors, and we want to create one single vector that's the resultant of these three. So I will show you two ways. First, using the parallelogram method. So we will, um, I'll, I'll fast forward this so you can just watch it. Okay, so it might be hard to see, but that pink 
vector is the resultant vector. I just used a couple parallelogram composition techniques and came up with that resultant vector. Now I'm going to undo that and show you how it might be a little bit quicker to do the vector chain method. So I'll fast forward so you can watch. Okay, and there you have it. As you can see, we have a nice resultant vector, which is just a composite of those three component vectors. And it looks the same as when we did the parallelogram method. Okay, so there you have it, vector composition in two different ways. And we can use vector composition to summate the forces and find the resultant magnitude and angle of our vectors. So we've now learned vector composition, vector resolution, and if you want to continue learning more about biomechanics and vectors, uh, head on over to this video right over here looking at the properties of force. And we're going to start getting into the properties of force and how they um, affect the system. If you have any questions for me, ask them down in the comments. I'd love to get back to you. If this content is helpful to you, please like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.